We are awaiting former President Donald Trump and House Speaker Mike Johnson to talk about election integrity. They are at Mar-a-Lago, and we will bring it to you live the moment it happens. But now let's get to this. Desperate Joe Biden is in a panic as Donald Trump hoovers up black support like no Republican in history. The big guy trying to win back the key voter group by giving a live virtual address at Reverend Al Sharpton's annual civil rights conference. There are real threats we face. There are more extreme voices out there who simply don't want to see people of color in the future of our country. They want to turn back the clock, voter suppression, election suppression, ripping away reproductive freedom, getting affirmative action, gutting it, and attacking diversity across American life. These extremists are determined to erase the progress we've made. But together, we are determined to make history, not erase it. Problem is, the dawn is catching on with African Americans. The latest aggregated Fox News national surveys show Donald Trump tripling his support among black men and black women since 2020. And sleepy Zoom call is no match for the Don's retail politics game. Trump hitting up a Chick-fil-A in Atlanta and handing out over 30 milkshakes. One supporter is going viral after giving the former president a big old hug. And what she said about the media should have Democrats quaking in their boots. Watch. So I don't care what the media tells you, Mr. Trump. We support you. That woman later giving the media more jazz we were able to not only let him know that regardless of what social media says you know i know they're trying to make us think we're supposed to hate you but we don't and additionally it was a learning experience for my students because they were able to see and experience firsthand how the media can warp the perception of an opinion or a person uh, she's absolutely right richard so this is very interesting because the president uh, so far in some of these battleground polls is doubling his support, particularly with black men. And what are the issues affecting them? They're not voting as a blob. They're individuals who are as concerned about the economy and immigration as any other voter in the country. Does this surprise you? No, it doesn't. I've actually done some reporting on this for both Forbes and BET. And I think the media in general, right, including right here, here at our network, I think what we've gotten wrong is I think we see the election, especially for black male voters, in this binary of voting for Trump or voting for Biden, when the truth of the matter is there's three choices. They could either choose, they could also choose to sit this election out. I've done two stories about how maybe black male... Maybe four choices? Maybe, and there could be four choices, sure. Um, but when you talk to black male voters, right, no matter where they live, and I've done reporting all across the country on this, what you find is they'll tell you the same thing. On average, they're at the bottom of all of the quality of life indicators in this country. Uh, and they'll tell you that life hasn't gotten much better, whether it was George Bush, whether it was Barack Obama, whether it was Donald Trump, whether it was Joe Biden. They still feel that their lives have not improved under any presidency, which is why the idea of them sitting this election out is so easy for them to do. But I think there's an interesting electoral marker to consider when you think about black men. In 2023 in Ohio, um, where the reproductive health was on the ballot, reproductive access for women was on the ballot. The group that voted in the highest percentage for protecting a woman's right to have reproductive health or access to abortion was actually black men by eight points. They voted 88 percent to protect a woman's right to have an abortion, outvoting white women, outvoting black women, outvoting every other subgroup, which says to me as an analyst that these voters, they might be up for grabs, and when they show up to vote at the polls, they tend to vote on issues that you wouldn't expect them to vote on. Um, but one of the issues that they are voting on, Judge, is immigration. And, oh, yeah. you know, one of the things that, that they are not getting from this administration is reassurance that the president and his administration are going to protect their jobs. Well, they're, they're certainly not getting any, any uh, reassurance from this administration. And in fact, I think one of the reasons that we're seeing more of the African-American community move toward Donald Trump is because of immigration, because of the fact, if you look at places like Chicago, you know, the minority community, the black and the, uh, the brown community in the inner cities are losing to the immigrants who are taking 
taking over places where they had after-school programs or projects that kept kids out of gangs and all that, and they're prioritizing the immigrants over them, subjugating the African American and 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 the uh, the, the minority community. But you know, when I, I have to comment on Joe Biden when he gets up there and he's not willing to answer a question, he's zooming in to Al Sharpton's uh, meeting there. At least Kamala Harris showed up. I don't know if she answered any questions. But he said, there are people who want to turn back the clock. There are people who don't want to see you get ahead. I mean, that is the kind of evil messaging that is not part of the factual basis that people are living in today. They look back at how their lives were four years ago, in fact, how their lives were right before Joe Biden took office, and they know it was better under Donald Trump. So you know what? You can threaten them, scare them, and tell them that, you know, these people are trying to put you back in chains, which I think is what Joe Biden has said. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just not the case. Blacks are smarter than that. Don't yeah, and he also them. said, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Right. He said that. He said that on a radio show. Um, but, you know, Pete, we, we look at some of these numbers, and it shouldn't be wholly surprising because uh, the president has doubled his support. What happens if he doubles it again before the election? And, and how likely is that based on some of the immigration and ep economic numbers? It's that possible. I mean, the, these polls are definitely or probably voting for Trump. That seems... Fairly definitive. Yes, some could decide not to vote, but definitely or probably is pretty strong. And those numbers are, are staggering. We had them up for a second, but... Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.